What is it like being off of social media for 14 months? So I'm coming up on 14 months off of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So I do not consider YouTube social media. Social media, I consider things that are geared towards interaction. I have, you can interact on YouTube, but if you compare like number of views with number of likes and number of comments and things like that, YouTube is not dominantly an interaction. It's the roots of it and is kind of fundamentally different than social media. Social media is still interaction and communication, of a boat two-way kind of interaction kind. YouTube is more of like television and ancient roots and storytelling and entertainment and plays and stuff like that. And so it's fundamentally a different nature as at least as I use it, than social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So I'm just, when I say, uh, talk about my break from social media, I'm referring to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, not YouTube. Because uh, to me, those are very different things. And I understand the roots and how they're different for the different types of businesses. And so <clears throat> I quit. <laughs> The University of California Berkeley as a student and I quit my job on before the beginning of the business day on the 31st of October 2019 so that's Halloween and Halloween 2019 and the same day I logged out of Twitter I logged out of Instagram I logged out of Facebook I deleted the apps from my phone if I hadn't already and I logged out of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on web browsers. So I was like, I'm, I'm, I can't do this anymore. Uh, each of them had a aspect of, I chose to start them for myself, uh, but there was an aspect of peer pressure in joining them in the first place. And I guess when taking a break from social media, this conversation should be, uh, it should be brought up, um, otherwise it's kind of not pointless, but you need the person's history of their usage. And because if someone says they have a 14 month break from social media and they haven't used social media in the first place, it's like, nah, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> and so, 14 month break. And so I started using Facebook in 2007 and I was 14 years old, 14 or 15 years old. And I started using Twitter and Instagram like 2016-ish time frame. So I was 23 to 24 years old and I didn't like use them heavily by any means. I'm social media and I didn't, I, I'm a picture taker and I'd upload them, but like not at Instagram picture taker like I like albums I like the story behind a picture and Instagram is more more so geared towards a single shot um and so and so that's why it was so long and coming around to Instagram which is like this isn't really what I do um I've, I've gotten uh, not better at it but I studied German journal photo journalism for five months and so like I'm like even if people just see it as a single shot I know the story of these individual photos that I post and so it was a kind of a self-standard thing, uh, raising of that. And so before I felt comfortable going on Instagram. And so I don't, I, for me, the, 2019, I, my goal was to use Instagram and Twitter and Facebook on a daily basis if I could. And I finally reached that, but it took a whole lot of effort to get to that level. I, before then I would be that person who would have an account and like for Instagram wouldn't log in ever. <laughs> I would have it and not use it for a year. Or I'd have Twitter and not use it for a year. Or I'd have Facebook and not use it for four months or something like that. Like they're just not things that are like, I have to have this, that it's just, um, they're designed to be addictive for certain people. Right? Um, and if you are, it, like and, and not targeting certain people if you're a certain type of human there um, it, it might be addicting and so like if you're a different type of human it might not be addicting at all like for me 
and so like I actually have to force myself to use it and it's just like when I'm forcing myself to use it am I really enjoying it I can reach that point but it's still not like naturally it's not my kind of niche so much as something like Yelp I like adventuring or YouTube sharing kind of thing and consuming watching things so <laughs> those are more of a natural fit for me it, did it uh, I guess it should be a does taking a break from social media when it's something that you grew up with so there are a bunch of theories about how people learn and that kind of thing and it especially all th like Facebook was kind of the giant that kind of sh shook up the social structure in uh, middle school and high school and so it has had a profound impact on my uh, at least the later developmental years still developmental years but like preteen to teenage years if you include MySpace and other new technologies and so I really wanted a break because I was like a lot of people up until it, people who were born in the early 1990s like I was pe like even my sister Facebook came out when she was on her way out of high school it didn't have nearly the same impact she was born in 1989 um, like Facebook didn't have nearly the same impact on people from her birth year as they did from people in my birth year in 1992 because we had the entire all high school to go through so of course it's going to be integrated into the social structure versus if you're a senior in high school or a junior in high school it's like we're already out of here who cares about it and so there was a huge difference in like how consuming it became and infiltrating social structure and so it was my decision to take a break from social media is the root cause is I didn't get my last developmental years free of this technology and I want to be free of it. I, I need to take time to reflect on how it affected my upbringing and take a step away and just not be on there for a while. And so, and that that's not really hard for me. My point for getting back on, I've mentioned this in other videos, is a uh, writing an autobiography I have I hit my head and got amnesia and so there's a bit of using these things and that was in 2014 and so there's a bit of using social media is great but there's also you gotta be able to remember things like if you're interacting with people from the past and that kind of thing I couldn't even remember my own sister there so there's just like stuff like that where it's kind of uh I realized I was like I'm not mentally functioning at a level I need to be um, to still be on here and so before I quit I like quit these social media temporarily I still have the accounts I don't log in uh, that kind of thing I, I don't check my accounts I don't log in and so it, it'll be a long break if there if these social media platforms are even around by the time I get around to being like maybe I'll get back maybe they'll be gone and I'll have lost my chance I don't know to go back to them and so yeah it, it wasn't a big deal for me I before I left I unfriended a bunch of people and unfollowed a bunch of people and like 2019 was kind of like an overhaul on my approach to them the different social media platforms and so like I, I literally unfriended several hundred people and it was just kind of like it, it was a lot of not agitation with the friends my friends themselves but with the platform that I was on and how it chose to present information and so it was just like oh like this is even after I go through the effort of being like close friends of Facebook will remove them as my close friend without me changing it myself and I'm like all right when you're choosing someone that let's be honest I didn't really like in the first place <laughs> and like over the people I mark as close friends and I have to get into this battle where Facebook thinks that someone shouldn't be my friend like that's a violation of human rights there we all have a right to interact with who we want like forcing people on me is not gonna make me use your platform <laughs> like yeah uh it will make me stop using a platform so I did and so yeah and so there's just some there's an ugly side to some of these platforms and they really need to work their stuff out so I was just like morally ethically uh, Facebook was the worst and so it was just like these are people I really care about and they're just like 
if I'm sending them as a close friend, they'll delete them as a close friend. The Facebook platform will, and I'm just like, when someone's going through domestic violence or something like that, and Facebook like intentionally screws with my friend list, <clears throat> that's inhumane. Like that's just so screwed up on so many levels. And so just no. And so I'm off and I'm happily off. Did it? <laughs> People talk about all of these impacts that being off of social media um, has had on their life. Mine, me. Like I, 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 I forced myself to use it towards the end there anyway. So it's not, it, does it have a big impact on my life being off of it? No. <laughs> it, it just, uh, I think it depends on the type of person you are. If you're allow yourself to be all consumed and that kind of thing. <clears throat> It could have an impact. Uh, I did spend a lot of time on there on some of these towards the end when I was posting a lot and that kind of thing and like I, I, if I'm posting I am also reading other people's posts and stuff too because I'm on, on the platform and so uh, there's a consumption as well as product like producing the stuff or posting stuff <clears throat> that they, those go hand in hand um, for me anyway there are people who will not who will not actually look at other postings and just put stuff out there <clears throat> and I refuse to be that person if I'm gonna be on those social media so that it, it, it was an adjustment as to I have way more free time <laughs> and it is sad uh, not sad but I think a wake-up call for how far my network is spread across all seven continents including Antarctica and so just kind of a wake-up call for Living in different places of the world does have mean that I'm not in the immediate vicinity of a lot of my friends. And so just kind of being like, okay, I'm going to take this time to heal and focus on me. And there's a bunch of uh, past traumas and head injury and stuff that I need to recover from. And so just taking the time for myself and not having social media has made that recovery so much faster. And like I can see at times hourly to daily progress and I wouldn't have had that if I was spending time on social media focusing on interaction as opposed to recovering and healing myself so I if you're thinking about doing it uh, I'm not gonna say you should or you shouldn't it's you you know yourself some people really need these technologies um, and social media and if it's keeping you going I've been through that where I my increase in usage of social media was a survival thing where it gave me a voice when I had that taken away at work and that kind of thing. So there is a very real place for it. <laughs> uh, the roots are um, there's the social interaction um, and some people take advantage of that and don't see the, the good to it. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's a very strong, it, it can be a therapy of sorts actually being on social media. And if you're doing that, there, there's also a taking time to deal with things yourself off of being in public. Or some people keep their accounts private. Um, I think my Facebook's private, but I'll post stuff publicly when I was on there, or I posted stuff. So just keeping that in mind, everybody's different. It's your choice too or not. So what's it like 14 months off? Life's, I, I actually, life's good. I'm, I'm just gonna say life's good because it, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better or not because I had so much going on and I quit a job and I moved states and stuff like that but literally the same day <laughs> as quitting it that I'm like, I might need more time to look at that in hindsight to be able to separate the social media from the drastic overhauls I was going in my life on literally the same day. So yeah. Here's to almost 14 months off of social media.